forward to meeting my man, Lord Rocker, Lord Chief yes. Rocker. Lord Rocker on the dock for us tonight, everybody. But uh, in the meantime and in between time, we wanted to do a little bit of, you know, just some housekeeping. You know, we've got some different things that we do on the show. We kind of changed the platform in terms of being so stringent. So we're kind of being a little bit more flexible and having a little bit more fun. So I know Lori had talked a little bit about wanting to do a little bit like some current events and us as a, a team here right now, we could talk a little bit about, you know, just how our week has been, you know, what's going on in the world and how people are feeling right now. Just kind of check in. Um, we were part of a really cool uh, brunch with God this morning. And during that time, it, we some of the ladies were sharing and men too, but anywhere people were sharing a little bit about, you know, how people are feeling and just kind of checking in with each other. I know we haven't done a show on COVID in a while, Lori G, but um, still in all, just kind of wanted to check in with everybody and see, Lori, how are you, you know, faring right now in light of everything that's going on, COVID-19 and the likes? Right. Well, you know, guys, I don't know if you saw this. I think personally, me and my family, we're doing, we're doing um, well. So, um my father-in-law is having some uh, challenges. He unfortunately contracted COVID and he um, is recovering, praise God. God. But um, 
it's just a it's been a challenging time and and when you have a loved one that 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 happens to i think it's hard for you to reconcile how some individuals that you see on the news are um not taking this i think as seriously i was watching cnn a few nights ago and there was a mansion party that some young people were having and they had a prop approximately a hundred 150 people there for a rapper's um, a rapper's party and I'm just like wow I know we're all tired of being in the house and <laughs> tired of distancing but I, I I don't I didn't understand that what do you guys feel about that do you think that a hundred people can be socially distanced and responsible at a mansion party? First of all, they weren't wearing masks. That was the first thing. Second thing, someone actually died. A a 35-year-old mother actually passed away um, from a shooting that happened at that at that mansion party. Oh my god. I did hear that that there was a there ended up being a shootout at the party. And um, the mother did pass away. That is horrible, horrible. horrible. Yeah. Uh, and they uh, interviewed a young guy. And the young guy on the interview, he goes, well, you know, we're tired of being in the house. What do you expect us to do? What do you expect us to do? And um, that was interesting to me. That was very interesting to me. I don't know if that's generational. I'd be interested to think, Rashid, what you and Lord Raka think of that behavior? Um, I definitely see it as just irresponsible because yes, yes, we're cooped up in the house. Well, I'm not cooped up in the house because I'm basically here almost every single day. So um, that's coming from a different perspective. But for someone that has been locked up in, in, in the house, you still have a responsibility to one, you know, I'm a, abide by the laws of, of the land. The laws of the land right now is to wear a mask, social distance, to actually, you know, stop the curve of of this pandemic, because we are in a pandemic. And I'm gonna wait two weeks to see um uh what the numbers are are, are gonna be now. Mm -hmm. Because um, with uh, with a uh, 150 plus, and then then there was another party. It was like a wedding that that there was a had. wedding. Mm -hmm. And then you had up in South Dakota, the you had like a thousand people. Uh, 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 I'm sorry, 1,500 people for a motorcycle rally. Right, and actually, Rashid, it's 25,000 people have hmm. descended. On oh my God. Head. The, the, the residents of the town, there's only 7,000 residents, but there's 25,000 people that come to this city in North Dakota every year to do this motorcycle ride. And so they are, they have descended upon this city and regardless of COVID, they don't care about that or the social distancing. And wow. their gov, the, I don't know if she's their mayor, I think she's their mayor is welcoming their arrival because it stimulates their economy. Okay, so um, once again, it, it, it comes down to the argument of the economy versus the people. There you go, right? right? Money or humanity, money or humanity. What are we, what are we doing? And you know what I mean? Lord Rocco, welcome to the show, sir. How are you tonight? Welcome. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Course. Money or humanity? Where do you fare on that scale? Um, definitely humanity. Uh, the cases are growing by the day, and I think that's for a reason to show us that this is very serious. So, um, yeah, um, you know, it's unfortunately that um, it's unfortunate that some of us are just gonna have to learn the hard way. You know. Um, Hopefully, you know, our young people will learn to take this serious. And I think that you know, um, uh, we, we live in a, in a generation that they're, they're a young generation who's smart and talented and they have so many gifts, but 
you know, uh, since they may have they may have seen that elders who weren't as successful as they would love them to be. So they don't really look at them as, you know, uh, for guidance or anything like that. So, I, you know, the Lord is in control. Uh, I'm looking, you know, every day is like a, uh, it's like a serious reality show. We all looking to go see what's going to happen next. Every day is something, you know, um, to look forward to. But I think we're going to be all right. Yeah, I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Yeah, Girl, I wanted to ask you, I know I saw on the news that um, the, public schools, the public schools in New York are opening. Have you, um, is that true? Are they opening up? How are things looking there in New York that, now? That, that is absolutely true, and I'm a little nervous about that. Um, uh, because we, we, we cut the curve. You know, New York is doing pretty good as far as numbers and stuff like that. We're one of the best in the 50 states. Now, you know, we went through our uh, chaos in the beginning. Yes. So now that, you know, we um, cut the curve and everything is, uh, seemed like we got everything under control, but they decided, I guess Cuomo decided he wanted, you know, it's okay to send the kids back to school. I'm a little wary about that. Um, you know, I mean, but, I mean, what do you do? That's a tough situation. That's just a tough situation. Um, I still have my kids quarantined into pretty much. I guess I'm a, I don't play Russian roulette with the kids. I don't take chances with my kids. So I still have them, you know, in the house. And say, my kids ain't like it. And I'm not, I'm not real popular with them right now. But, um, <laughs> That's just what type of dad I am. I, I'm not your friend. I'm your dad. So I, I, it really doesn't bother me if I'm not popular with you or not. I care about your concerns, but, uh, you know, I look at it like this. This thing is real. You don't really understand it like I do. You know, I mean, we didn't have to go through that. And I know generation, I have a daughter that's graduating this year. And unbelievable, I mean, the adversity she had to go through was crazy, you know what I mean? No prom, no graduation, quarantine and all, I mean, for the past four or five months. It's like, I feel so bad, but I have to be strong just to let her know, because um, they can take your sadness and your kindness for a week, and yeah. soon Yes, they can, because of the mere fact, you know, and you know what, what happens is, you say, the, the, the big thing in the house is, you say one thing as dad, and mom says the opposite. Why is it always like, that? you know, mom kind of under, you know, what are you gonna do? So it's like, <laughs> I, try, I try to back up a little bit and just let them, you know, cause she is 18 now. So, she, you wow. know, so, you know, I try to let her be a, a young woman she is. And, uh, you know, it's, I, I try to give her a little freedom, but I'm, I'm scared, guys. And <laughs> this COVID thing is no joke. No, it's not. Okay. So we just have to remain safe and be smart and uh, do what's right, you know? But, you know, when we talk about COVID, we have to talk about COVID because it's real. But, uh, I think tonight, Gerald, Lori G, and Rashi, we've got some amazing talent that the Lord has blessed us with. And so in the midst of COVID, and that being shared, I think we've got to also revel in the good things, right? And think, you know, some positive things that have come out of COVID. I know, for instance, everybody, when Lori, when the show, when the COVID hit, right, in terms of lockdown, quarantine, that was, I believe, like the third week of March. And so we truly, as a show, as an artist, Lori and I, we had no idea what we were going to do. You know what I'm saying? It was like, do we go back in the studio? Do we not go to the studio? And at first, it was like, we couldn't go to the studio. You know what I mean? It wasn't an option. And so just going through that journey of a new normal as we now know it. But that is to say, in the midst of switching those reels, we have met some 
amazing new people, new talent, new artists, new way of thinking. And um, part of that, I'm just going to say, I'm honored to have the life of Mr. Charlie 305 Miami staff in no, the house. Right? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm like, we have a platinum freaking recording artist in our Miss Lori who rolls with us like on the regular. Right? Mm -hmm. On the regular. Right. On the love you, Charlie. Because what's I know up, what's up? Is, what's up, cutie pie? What's up? How you I'm doing? I'm chilling, chilling, man. <laughs> trying to trying to do better by the day. Yeah. Yes. So you're doing good. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. He out there making that money. So yeah, he's doing good. Y'all <laughs> check out Mr. Charlie 305 Instagram, y'all. <laughs> so freaking extra. I adore it. <laughs> you guys gotta check him out, everybody. So but what I wanted to do, Mr. Charlie, and particularly my very special guest, I'm going to give a little bit of history here, guys. Okay. Be a historian. So, 2000, the show started 2016. We just had our birthday. Her birthday was August 6th. The Poetry of Justice show turned a whole four years of age. Yeah. <laughs> Anywho, we've had a lot of twists and turns with that, but that being shared, 2017, I was blessed to have uh, a very interesting, this is, Joy, you asked me this earlier today, like some questions about Lord Rock. And Lord Rock, you have been the topic of discussion in my life for the last 24 hours, but very intensively for the last two hours. So Joy and I were talking earlier today, Joy wants to get a little bit of background and history. And I'm like, well, Gerald, we're going to learn a lot of that today show, like very detailed questions. You know, Gerald gets into the onion of things. And so um, I shared, Lord, that the last time you were on the show, um, about three years ago, we were doing something different. Remember that night we were doing a poetry flow show, you know what I'm saying? And we had artists. So there were other rappers and, and poets on the show that night, everyone. And that being stated, I with Lord Rocker. We had a uh, we had a freestyle and some good fun. So Lord Rocker, I just want to tell you thank you so so much. The fact that you came back to our show and I love it and I'm grateful and I thank you so much for being here. You're such a talent and we're gonna be learning so much about you and I wanted to bless you with the most uh, loving and comprehensive team that we have on the POJ show which is my sister, executive producer, Gerald Tapper, who knows just about a lot of people anybody needs to know, and the amazing platinum artist, Mr. Charlie, in the house tonight, so we can all commune. So thank you for your time tonight, Lord Rocker. How are you, like, deeply? How you doing? Uh, thank you so much. I appreciate everyone uh, that's on the panel uh, today, you know, uh, for taking your time out your busy schedules to uh interview me i am deeply humbled by it uh, uh jackie you know that uh when i got on your show the first time it was such a blessing and i told myself that i would definitely return so um it's, it, it's just blessed um you know like the covid 19 i just you know because we get through this and we it's just it's a, just a beautiful journey things are still happening and i'm uh, so blessed. Thank you, everyone. And I'm here to answer all your questions. Don't I'm not dodging no questions. I love questions. So let's get to it. <laughs> no, good. Okay, well, let's start with some a couple questions. But I want to ask something first on the technical side of things. And that goes out to our amazing engineer, Rashid. Quick question, Rashid. Did Laurie G, do you have any of the, the music yet, sir? Yes. Yes, I do. Awesome, awesome. Okay, so what I'm thinking we should do, Lord Rocker, I want to give our listeners and our panelists a little bit about Lord Rocker and Jack too, because I just knew, you know, back then Janelle was with us and Janelle set everything up and you guys rolled through and we did what we did. Okay, question before the question, Lord. Question before the question. <laughs> How did Lord Rock affair with those other panelists that was uh, on the show before? How did he do compared mm -hmm. to those other poetry guys that was on the show before? He, he showed out. I'm going to just say that. He showed out. He showed up and he literally showed out. Um, we, have, we still have some uh, like 
footage of it. And I, you know, I'm straight real. Oh, okay. Right, we're going to do that, Rashi. I can do it, but I'm going to find that day and we're going to pull it. And I could pull the audio of it. And we can take a look at that, and we can uh, we can pull it, you know, and bring it back to the show. But uh, I, he tore it up because I want us to listen to some of his work first, uh, because I have what I what I hear, like particularly your most recent, which you sent me over. I was like, I've been listening to you, like like I said, the last intensively for the last like twenty four hours. My brain is just all about your work, and so. I was blessed to have it. I know we got to let a lot of our panelists do it too, but I'm going to have one question before we get into some of your work. I'm going to just let Rashid pick something. We're going to just roll with it. But that being stated, who is Lord Rocka? How did you come about? L-O-R-D dot R-O-K-A. Who is that dude? Yes, man. That's so a beautiful uh, and easy question to answer. Uh, at first, my rap name was D-Rock. Um, that came from, you know, my first name being Danny and I was coming up, I was a big Rockefeller fan. So I took the name Rock uh, and I just, you know, flipped it around so it just won't be so similar to Rockefeller. And um, I once, uh, you know, in 2016, I learned that the, um, the word Lord means someone who was an authority over something. I said, okay, that's beautiful. And then um, I Googled the word Rocka because I always went by, you know, they call me Rock, but everybody would be like, Rocka, Rocka. So I'm like, man, let me just Google the word Rocka. And I found out that Rocka is actually the, um, the, the crescent that you see actually in the, in the ocean and the way when the waves making a, 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 a you know, when the, when the waters in the ocean make a wave, it's like a white crescent on the water. That's also called Rocka as well. So I just put those two together and I said, I am an authority over the wave of my own creativity. And that's the definition that I that I got from putting Low Rocker together, and I it it was perfect. It was it was it was perfect. Um, I feel it fits me as an artist. Um, you know, I have several styles that I got, and you can tell about the music if you listen to it. You know, he sounds good here, he sounds good there, and it's like I'm I'm beautiful. You know, so that's the reason why I got the name Low Rocker. You are so freaking deep. Of course, that's the reason why you got the name Low Rocker. Uh, Gerald, before we get into some music, did you have anything you had want to ask Mr. Lord Rocker before we go into the music clip? Um, you know, you got a baby face, brother. You look like about 17, man. <laughs> and I just wanted to know, um, if you don't mind, uh, are you in your twenties? If you don't want to tell me your exact age, but are you in your mid or early twenties? No, I'm not afraid to say I'm 32. Right. Ooh, my <laughs> man, hey, man. It don't, yeah. black don't crack, killer. My man, it don't. Yes, yeah. Sir. Uh, no. So you well, a veteran? Me... You a veteran? You get you getting that uh, veteran salary, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm new to it. So uh yeah, I've been doing this for a while, you know, since since ninety eight. Uh I've been writing rhymes and um you know, I've been I, I was influenced by a Jay Z, though I live on the West Coast. Ah, that's why I wanted them to hear your stuff first. Man, cause when I damn, you already went there, you just went straight for the jugular. Oh, I'm, 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 I mean like, am I listening to Jay on the straight reel? I had you on and he was like is that Jay Z? I was like, no, that's yeah. Rocker coming on my shit. That's he's coming to my right. shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Y'all gonna hear it, Charlie? I can't wait for you to take a listen, see what you think. So, have you, Rocker? Have you um, have you been um, were you signed anybody before? Or were you um, during your years? Or are you do, always independent? Good question. In two thousand and four, I I got an uh, independent um. I was on an independent label called Hood for Life Records, and we had a distribution deal with uh, Universal. So that's the closest, uh, you know, uh, time I've been uh, signed to uh, with Universal was in 2004. That lasted from 04 to about 05, just a year. And um, yeah, that was from 2004 to 2005. And um, you, you put out a, a, your own single, I mean, I mean your own, individual material or you put out with a group or how did that work? 
Well, the reason I got on the label because they had so many rappers on the label and they didn't want to bring on other rappers. But, you know, I, I speak fluent Spanish. So they um, they needed, uh, at the time, reggaeton was big. It's still big now, but now it's like reggaeton trap. But at the time they needed, you know, reggaeton was big. So then the, the label that was, um, I mean, the group that was signed on to the label, they needed their single flipped into reggaeton into Spanish. I did that. They loved it. They signed me. And um, I didn't get a chance to pull out a full album, but I was their reggaeton artist, and I was full. Are you? Are black. you from like? Are you from like? I had asked Jackie this earlier. Are you Caribbean? Are you? Even though you you're a brother, are you yeah. Caribbean? Or are you? Uh, no, uh, both both my both my parents are from Honduras, Honduras. So you from Honduras? Are. Okay, yeah. Yeah, 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 yes, yeah, sir. So you've been to New York before. Yeah, I was out there in 2014. I lived out there for, from May to June in 2014 for a month. I have a lot of family out there. Oh, okay, my man. Was I was so staying okay. in uh, uh, the Dykeman Projects. <laughs> oh, yeah. I was in Dykeman. Well, was, yeah. was a lot of, it was a lot of Spanish speaking up there. Yeah. yeah most so, definitely, yeah. most definitely. And y'all stores never close. It's amazing down there. It's crazy. Yeah, y'all. Man in, uh, so. Rashid, why don't you start us off with one of Lord Raka's songs? Yeah. Party with the gang in the end zone. Let it up good, let it burn slow. Suckers want a free ride, hell no. Wouldn't even do it in a pinto. Everyone working they on call. Ran up the bread and we got more. They was wanna leave us in cages. They don't even know this got more. Turn it up, turn it up, turn it up, light it up, light it up, light it up, turn it up. Turn it up, turn it up, turn it up, turn it up, light it up, light it up, turn it up. Turn it up, 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 light it up, turn it up. Turn it up, 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 turn it up. Talk about the gang cause we all knew. What is the record that they down to? We stay full of hate and we don't get along, that was untrue. Your girl tried to tell you I was nobody. That was her and the line trying to get up in our party. Yeah, we laughing, you gon' check your keys. Yeah, we laughing, don't you hear her scream? Turn it up, turn it up, turn it up, light it up, light it up, light it up, turn it up. Turn it up, turn it up, turn it up, turn it up, light it up, light it up, turn it up. Turn it up, 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 light it up, turn it up. Turn it up, turn it up, turn it up, turn it up, light it up, light it up, turn it up. Turn it up, turn it up, turn it up, turn it up. Swing through the night, that's back game. Name in the sky, that's back game. College girls come to the function. Why don't they know that's hot brain? Bet the party jump plus my ass go. Don't lie. Bet the party jump plus I'm down with the five. You know the party jump, I'ma rep my side. Please don't kill this vibe. Turn it up, turn it up, turn it up, light it up, light it up, light it up, turn it up. Turn it up, 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 light it up, light it up, turn it up. Turn it up, 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 light it up, turn it up. Turn it up, 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 light it up, light it up, turn it up. One more time, one more time. Gotta speak my mind. You so fine, you're in all the time. So you think I be tripping when you say you don't love me? All these girls and they parked in the bag in the buggy. My crew, my whip, my hood, my fan, my hoodie with me. Turn it up, turn it up, turn it up, light it up, light it up, turn it up. Turn it up, turn it up, turn it up, turn it up, light it up, light it up, turn it up. Turn it up, 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 light it up, turn it up. Turn it up, turn it up, turn it up, turn it up, light it up, turn it up. Turn it up, turn it up, turn it up, turn it up, light it up, light it up, turn it up. Let it up. Turn nice, it up. Nice, Turn nice. it up. All right. Well, our Zoom room, they say clap, clap, <laughs> clap. Big thumbs up, Lord Raka. And they also yeah, want to yeah. know do you rap in Spanish? Yes, uh, I rap in Spanish. Um, you know, so, uh, it's been a while I've rapped in Spanish. Uh, don't have anything memorized, but I, but in, <clears throat> if it wasn't for, uh, you know, the label pushing me, but I probably wouldn't have done it. Um, so, uh, yeah, but I definitely can. And I also can write for other people in Spanish too, if I had to. <laughs> Chris was. You gonna say something in Spanish for us, Lord Rocker? Okay, no problem. <laughs> 
Hola, ¿cómo está mi gente? Yo soy Honduras. A mí me gusta hacer la música. Ha sido la música el, el, el nuevo año. El nuevo año. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. I appreciate it. Here, Chris said that's awesome. Yes. Do we don't want to do another piece? Rushy, darling, I think maybe we should do one more. God, I wish I had my notes down there because you know, then I could tell Rushy which song. Lord Rocka. What uh, yeah. get it up to get the most recent new release? What's the feature song for your most recent new release? Um, the one the one we just played was the most recent one, and yes. and then you have a rec a record by the name of Summer, and then um, I I forgot what else I said. I don't know if I, I don't know if I sent you Body featuring Dante Harris. Um, that's the one Body. Can we do bo Body, Rashi? When you can locate it, if you can. We could take a listen to that. That would be amazing. I love that piece. Mr. Charlie, 305. What do you think? I you heard Miss Lloyd Rocker's piece. Rashid's going to be working with us in the week. So um, I know you've been in the game a cool minute. So being who you are and what you've done, <laughs> talking to Lloyd Rocker, listening to his work, just kind of where does that take, take you artistically? Well, you know, I actually listened to it today when, uh, when, when you sent me the link. Uh, that's the actual song I liked when I when I listened to the um, uh, when I went on the IG. I think it was IG, it's IG. Yeah, I thought it was hype. I thought it was dope. Um, the delivery is dope. The way he come across with the lyrics. Um, so he he got everything that I think that an artist need to make. Sometimes you just waiting on your you know your time your spot you know. And um, the thing is just not to get discouraged because you know some people you know they've been in the game over. 10 years and, and then make it, you know, 15 years and make it. So it's no time limit on it, no age limit on it. So just stay, you know, to your craft and keep doing what you're doing. And um, it seems like you just keep enhancing as you, you know, get better with age, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, just keep, keep going. And also I like to throw in a lot of the older songs that you probably feel like they're older, you know, but the lyrics need to be tightened up. Just bring new beats with them and, you know, don't throw away that old material, you know. Um, always go back to them them files. You know what I mean. Just go back. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. on because yeah, it's a lot of stuff that's older. You know, it'll be new to people. Yeah, sir. Yeah, sure, sure. Cool. Absolutely. What about you, Jay? Jay, what you, uh, okay, I'm sorry, Jay. Rashid, go ahead, love. Okay, so um, you want Lord Lord Rocker bodied? Yes. Yeah, the record is called Bodied and Dante Harris. Yep, I got it. Cool, thank you. All right, let's play it. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to the Get Up. Yeah, the Get Up. Get on with Rocker, you know it's a go. Back full of green and we off on the road. Big up the get up, we all in the get up, we all in the business, we all in the dinner, we beastin' for show. Ay. Them honeys, them hotties, they wanna be bonnies and bop with the dough. So they look and they checkin' and get to the dough. Though we put down the guns, we still kept on the mask. Get all them bags and it's up to the next. Rollin' them fresh, I'm in love with the licks. You comin' to rob me, I light up your set. How y'all jumpin' off bridges and hitting them fences and hitting the deck? Man. You suckers is funny, I'm back to the money, you back to the bummy. My women, they love me, your women, they love me. They all wanna see me, and all for the titty, and all for the kitty. All over the city, I love it, I'm picky. I'm sticking with baddies, they calling me daddy, and back to the chick. Put on that beat, don't get by. Back on my gun, you get by. Saucy and black, I didn't buy. Tell my lady, we're by. Back on that pussy, get by. Back on that pussy, get by. Talking that murder, get by. Put on that beat, don't get by. Back on my game, you get body. Saucy and black, I didn't body. Tell my lady we're body. Back on that pussy, get body. Back on that pussy, get body. Talking that murder, get body. Coppers ain't scaring nobody. Got many ways that I can pull it. Master chef, the track and cook, I've never been the type to ever lose it. Uh, can't afford to ever lose it. Uh, 
Some of y'all talk about what I'm not, but the music and clubs and the money is in the now. We live in a town where they want to throw Satan and get you fired. Rather load up the bullets and get you fired. Have the juice and the shots is the age of fire. She told me she would and she so expensive. Laugh at your Denny's reply. You want that penny, huh? You do want a fat, huh? You do want a fat, huh? We don't got a penny, huh? Nah. Remember them times on the ground, you ain't have a penny, huh? you got to know when it's a wrap but this is the biggest one and we put it in the ad today Laura Rocker. if you could kind of just give us a little bit of uh, critiquing if you will on you have to be your own you have to be the master chef the master chef and you can't lose can you take us down that thought process in those lyrics yeah most definitely um, when whenever you're creating something you know um, you want to strive to create something that's never been created before. And that's how you want to set yourself apart from everybody else that's doing and working on music. I think that the mentality coming in, into the game or music industry with that mentality helps you set yourself apart from everybody else. And it's just like being in the kitchen. And I'm a, I'm a firm believer that men should learn how to cook too. You know, and a you lot of <laughs> I grew up in a single parent uh, household with my mother. She did a wonderful job with me. And um, a lot of women can relate to that, you know, being a chef. Though they don't rap, they know what it's like to be in the kitchen and prepare something that is going to taste good, be different. And women switch it up in the kitchen all the time. Women don't. Typically, typically make the same over again. It's us men who love making sandwiches, and the sandwiches we're very simple, right? So I just take that mentality that the, that, that that women have and put it in the studio and just mix it up, be different, chefing it out, and I just relate it to. I like to make a lot of comparisons, and um, uh, a lot of hot comparisons, and that's the pretty much the strategy strategy that I go into when I record music, and that's what that whole you know uh, lyricism is about. Okay, what about talking that murder good body? Literally, you know, I'm not. It's, it's, so what's so funny is that you know, it, it, it sounds like when you listen to that, you think, okay, he's thinking about murdering people, you know, actually putting people in body bags. No, you can murder, you could, you could, you could uh, beat somebody to the end of the, uh, uh, of the wall and you murdered them, you killed them, you know right. what I'm saying? And I what, the beautiful thing about hip hop, 
is that it allows us to put our own definition or our own, own view on certain words. That's the that's hip hop probably is the only genre that allows you to do that. And that's pretty much what I when I said murder get body. Like if you challenge me at this hip hop, you're gonna murder, you're gonna get body. You know? So 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 that's that was that was my call out to my to my challengers. If we if we're gonna do this song for song, I'm gonna win. At, in a, just competitive nature, just competitive nature, that's all that is. That's part right there. I, I well, honestly, I clearly didn't think you meant it in the literal sense, which is why I took notation because I wanted to know where you went, where you metaphorically, you know, what that meant. Yeah. Mr. Charlie, I got a question for you, sir. When based on what we've talked about, being master chef and and, and not being able to move, and, you know, talking that murder, you get body. It's just the way it goes. Competition in the game. What was that like? What has that been like for you in your walk, your journey in hip hop, and what you do, sir? Um, kind of um, piggying back on what he said, I try to put myself in, in my own lane. So um, it's a competitive sport, but I also try to make music that separates me from the other artists too. Um, so I don't really look at it as a competition. I look at a lot of stuff as my own lane. It, it sounds so simple what I'm saying, but I don't see competition like that because I, I, I set myself apart musically and um, lyrically, you know, wow. hooks and everything, ideas and concepts. Got it. Makes sense. What about you, Gerald? In your walk of life, have you had any scenarios where you could apply like being your own master chef and just kind of taking shit, not taking no losses? What do you feel about that? <laughs> Shit, I violate the norms of everything. I, I, I take the road less travel on everything. I'm just a different type of dude, man. You know what I mean? I think you guys figured that out a long time ago about me, man. I, I'm just unique in my own way anyway. I mean, period. You know what I mean? I, I, I don't follow, you know, the norm. I'm just, I got my own route and shit. You know, and that's how artists are. I'm an artist, but I'm not a performing artist. I'm on the other end of it. That's why I'm good on the other end, because of the artistry in me. I have it in me, but uh, I, I chose to go the other route. I guess I was a little uh, stage fright. You know, it's reasons to this, it's methods to this man. It's, you know, I never wanted to become, I always dreamed about being an artist, Lord, but you know, I mean, you gotta, you gotta know, you gotta have a heart to get on that stage. You gotta, you gotta, you know, you gotta have a, a, a big ticket with that game coming with you. Obviously, you got a big ticket. I know Mr. Charlie do. You know what I mean? I know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You gotta, you gotta be a strong individual, man, to do what you brothers are doing. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, that's right. And, and I just went, I just went on my strength. You know what I mean? My strength is aiding brothers like you, is helping brothers like you, is guiding brothers like you. That's my strength. But as far as me out there kicking it, man, listen. As soon as them curtains open, I might, I might take a peek. I might piss on myself. <laughs> <laughs> You're so crazy. Yeah. Silly goose. <laughs> But yeah, no, big, big time, big friends. you know, I was, I was taking um, a, a communication class in, uh, in college and they were saying um, that um, public speaking is the number one fear in the world after death. Now, people rather die than go out in the front of the world <laughs> or in front of anybody. I was like, wow. So, yes, you know, that's why um, that's the beautiful about these artists or, or you know those who get in front of people that they're very courageous like bro like uh brother big tap said you know it takes a very unique talent and skill there for people hey thanks for sharing that with me man because uh jackie and charles and uh lori can tell you and rashid can tell you when i first got on the show here when they first allowed me and blessed me to get on the show, man, I was abysmal. Man, I was, <laughs> I mean, I was straight from the hood, brother. I could, you know, I, I was frightened, man. 
the bottom <laughs> line, man, I had stay, I had fright to speak, you know. I'm usually, when I usually talk, I'm in my own d domain where I'm comfortable, man. But now I'm in a larger stage and people watching and listening, man, you freeze up, brother. And that's exactly <laughs> what I did. But as you see now, you don't know, Lord, but now I'm a lot more relaxed and I'm, I'm every day I get better and better at this thing. So this is like a stepping stone to what I'm doing. Like, you would have asked me this 10 years ago when I was in the flow and in the mix, I was nice, but I lost, you know, you lose your skills. When you're on hiatus or you just fall back and you get out of something, you, you, you know, you lose it. But now I'm come, I'm a comeback, brother. And, you know, better and better. You're your LL Cool J. <laughs> you're your LL Cool J chat. <laughs> you're yeah, the comeback. Hey. Hey Tap. Ah. hey Tap, remember we was, um when we was, we had the, I think it was the G Lou show that all this was on a while back. I was talking about the artist development, what they took out of a lot of the um companies over the years because everybody been coming independent, where they'll teach you how to speak on interviews and stuff like that. So a lot of artists now, um today we was talking about how they don't even know how to do an interview. They don't know how to talk. They don't know how to hold a, like a conversation with a, a spokesman or a spokeslady or, and they just ignorant all over the all over the place and saying stuff that don't match. But uh, just like Lord Rocker, he, you could tell that he's evidently taught himself or been watching stuff over the years because he talks very professional, you know, so and that's what's missing out of uh, a lot of the artists I see today. The new artist. No, I think as far as Lord Rocker and you, I mean, I know more about you, Charles, but him too, I'm sitting here watching him and see how he delivers, you know, what he's saying. With you guys, it's more or less breathing because when you learn how to rap, when you on that mic, man, breathing is very important. So, you know, you learn how to speak and breathe and do all that simultaneously, you develop, uh, you know, you uh, develop stamina for talking. You develop, it, it becomes easier, you know what I mean? Where if, um, I, when you when you talk in slang and you just a clown and you having a lot of fun with your peers and you just having fun with people, that's what I pick, you know, you pick up, you, you are what you eat. You are what you say. You are, you know, you are what you do. You know what I mean? You guys do uh, songs. You guys express yourself through lyrics and everything. Man, when it comes to speaking, man, you guys are eloquent. Eloquent. Because of the mere fact you do it. it, it it's nothing to you, man. It comes out easy, man. Because rapping and, and, and performing is hard. You know what I mean, Mr. Duck? You, you, you know, I thought, you know, it would be, you know, I thought he would have this type of, uh, you know, it, it wouldn't be as, uh, he wouldn't be as smooth as I thought he, when he got on this show, I knew that's a part of him. I knew right there, you know what I mean? I got to step my game up, you know what I mean? <laughs> and, and he told me too. <laughs> okay. <laughs> he let it well, yeah, you I, tell, I can tell, man, you, you're passionate about your craft, Lord, mm -hmm. man. I can see the way you talk, the way you deliver yourself, and the smoothness about you. You, to me, the, see, I met Charlie even younger than you. But to me, it, it's, it's crazy, but it's like, this is a blessing because you seem like a young Charlie to me. When he, was platinum, when he was platinum, that was you, killer. But you were, little, you know, you were a little old. He was platinum at 25, 24. But I, I see that, you know, when we was in New York running the streets back then and doing our thing, that's you, man. And y'all and y'all look similar. You know what I mean? Y'all keep it's killing me right now. You know what I mean? Oh it's just different styles. But uh Charlie, man, maybe, maybe, maybe we can be blessed one day, man. 
to uh, produce a track for him, send him a track and see what he can do or stuff. Give him one of the give him one of them blazing fire tracks you got. And let's right, just right. see for fun, see what he can do on it. Now he can he gonna he I can already tell he can get on any track. You know, um, <laughs> just being an artist, uh when you really good at this, you can already see through people and, and uh, mm -hmm. he's the type of artist that can go anywhere on any track he, he I, I can hear the the west coast the east coast i can hear everything so which means he's he's he have a universal ear he know how to consume all over the world and just make his own out of everything he's heard and listened to so I, I don't have no fear that he he'll be able to get on any track and just rip it you know so he, he have that ability yeah Lori G, what you got going on over there? You're off the side tonight, sister. So I am. I'm just soaking up the beautiful music and listening to the incredible interview in our Zoom room. Um, Lord Rocka, you are definitely a hit. Miss Chris Fisher has said that um, she's glad every word in your rap is not a cuss word. Laugh out loud. <laughs> and she says uh, she appreciates that. And she also agrees with you that you can murder with your thoughts as well as, you know, so uh, physically. So mm -hmm. um, those are our Zoom room comments. I'm really curious in listening to you talk, Lord Raka, how did you get started in music? How did you know that this incredible lyricist lived inside of you? When, when, when were you aware of that and how did your journey begin? Good question, Lori. I believe, um, well, this is what my mother used to do. Uh, my mother, she uh, bought three albums, okay? and that was uh, Tony Braxton's Secrets, uh, oh, the Bodyguard soundtrack. <laughs> yeah, the Bodyguard uh, soundtrack by Whitney uh -huh. Houston, and uh, the Boys album that came out in 1994. She bought those mm -hmm. three albums. And she bought a radio and then she would have those three albums in repeat. And um, I fell in love with the music. And that's when I knew I wanted to write music, not be an artist. I wanted to just write. And then mm -hmm. eventually, of course, when I got introduced into hip hop later, uh, around nine, 10 years old, that's when I knew I wanted to rap. Of course, like I mentioned earlier, one of the first artists that I've heard rap was Jay-Z. And um, I knew, okay, after I heard him, I'll try this rap. But it's so crazy that I, I do rap music, hip hop music, but it wasn't hip hop rap music that truly got me on a path to want to get involved with music. It was R&B, it was salsa, it was a genre by the name of punta music that we listened to back in Honduras. It was that type mm -hmm. of vibe that got me involved in music. And also I got to um, add that my father was a bass player. He played ah. uh, uh, with heavy, like I think with heavy D would do his live performances, my dad would, <laughs> would, would help him with that so you know um that's how that's that's my root in music and i've been on it ever since mm -hmm. you see, I, got, I got a question too i got a question for you um yes sir due, due to the fact you you midway in the in the rap game um because i'm i'm 49 now so uh i say 49 because my birthday august 22nd but uh happy you, birthday yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, so you have a young, a young, the young rap rappers out right now. You got the midway, then you got the older. Um, what's the good and the bad that you've seen through the years that you've been in it? That you midway from the good and the bad with the young, the good and the bad with the older. Oh, that's a very good question. I know. I, know, right? <laughs> I had wow. to get them. <laughs> Um. Okay. Okay. I think uh, the answer to that would be the young rappers don't study enough, don't know their history enough. I knew um, the beginning of, I went in and got books and read about the beginning of hip hop and how it started in Trenchtown, Jamaica, then moved to the Bronx with DJ Cool Hurt and then spread to the park. See, but you ask a young rapper today about the history of hip hop and they can't even tell you or name you the forefathers of hip hop. That's right. very important, right. right? So the young artists today, most of them don't know their history. Right. When you don't know your history, 
you, you don't know what to fall back on when you run out of ideas because you're new. Okay? Right. And old, you know, it happens with every generation. It, 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 this ain't this ain't like oh, it's just the old. It happens with every generation once they pass. I say the thirties and up. They always look at the uh, younger generation under them like, oh man, them they, they messing up the culture. They they they're coming up with something new and we ain't rocking with it. We don't give ourselves an opportunity because I'm I'm at some now. I'm giving myself an opportunity to listen to young people and hear what they got to say and settling on the best part of them. You know, they're creative. You know, they still got the talent. They just need to be guided. They got the strength and the power. This is the Joshua generation. They just need to be guided. And like the and, and like the Holy Scripture say is old man for counsel and young man for war. And that's and, and and that's how you you know you bridge the gap between those two. Right. That, that's perfect answer. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. That was amazing. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's a great question, Lord G. So ooh, yeah, wow. Hey, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Lord Rocket, I have another question. Yes, ma'am. So Bring them I want to hear I want to hear the story of the first time you ever performed a rap. Where was that, and 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 what was that like, and what were you feeling? I think the first time I performed a rap was probably uh, I went to a junior, I think uh, manual arts high school, and I was about like ten, eleven years old, and they had a, a performance up there, and um, because I was in a group at the time, I didn't feel alone. I didn't feel scared. Me, it was a three man group. Uh, one of my best friends, uh, Vernon and Quincy, we were all in the group, and we didn't have a name for the group, but we just rapped together. Um, that was the first time I think I did uh, like a live show, and uh, it felt it felt good, you know. Um, and I know I love doing shows because it, it takes um, it takes uh, a lot of uh, hard work to move a crowd. One thing I've learned about um, performing is that. Uh, you know, it's important to have breath control and not be afraid to control the crowd. You know, when I say, hey, I say, oh, those little small, small little tactics are important when performing. And um, I learned just so much uh, just doing shows throughout the years. So, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. I have another Mr. question. Kelly, oh, go ahead. Well, go ahead. Go with your question first. Oh, well, I was I was interested to compare your very first time on your very first rap with Lord Rocka's experience. So he was like yeah. ten or eleven, right? So what was what was your first start, Mr. Charlie? The first time okay. you rapped. Well, well, the first time I, I well, I got to put it this way: I, first time I I was on a stage. Um, was actually dancing. So, um, you know, dancing, well, graffiti and dancing was like the first um, intros to hip hop, you know. So um, after that, I started beatboxing for my cousin and talent shows. And uh, I always wanted to rap. And, I, and after that, I started writing. And um, one day, um, he used to always criticize all my raps. And then one day I wrote a rap and he asked me who wrote it. So that's when I knew I was getting better. You just kept saying, you, you didn't like it. You know what I'm saying? So, um, so that 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 started me on to like, I'm, I got to write another one. I got to write another one. So, um, but Far's performance, um, we had that, when I go back to um, the interview with G. Lou, we had artist development that showed us how to do shows, how to rock a crowd, how to say, oh, this and that. So we had a lot of development um, with, with far stage performance and presence because I was actually shy. And still to this day, I'd be shy when I perform, but you'll never know it because I yeah. learned how to get on the stage and, and just block everybody out, you know? Right. And, um, and then when I get off stage, like, that was a good show. And I was like, man, you don't know how scared I was, man. <laughs> oh, right. Because you got people looking at you and there's some people not smiling and they just looking at you, they not clapping. <laughs> they, you know, right. like they into it, but then right. after you get off stage, that person will walk up to you and say, I like that show. You know, they just not, they just not hype about stuff. And then you got people, hey, hey, you know. So Lord, you, if, you if have, that's you know, all of those vibes going on, you know. If that but is that true, what Charlie just said, I'm going to tell you something, Lord. 
if that's true, I, I don't know if I can believe that, but that's my man. But uh, <laughs> when he when he came to New York for the first time and, and he stayed with me and the, we had about three or four shows, right? So this was I was excited because this was my first time seeing. So all the play, all the venues that I you know I set up for them, they were good ones. It was like a lot of rappers there, and you know it, you know he had really a chance to show us what he can do, and, you know. And at the whole time I'm looking at him just to see his presence, and see how he you know see how he's going to take this on his um you know his body image and everything and he you know he was killing you know he looked like i got this you know blah 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 listen my man if he just said he was scared when he went on <laughs> he's just trying to you know he's trying to, yeah, okay. yeah but you know what it, it, they it's had hard, three it's hard or four for rappers to that. get yeah. on stage salt and pepper got on stage on his song yeah, and, and and sang the whole song. With them. <laughs> yeah. They never heard this song before. They sang the it, whole. Song. It was an easy song, though. They, they, see, he's him saying that you'd be like, "How would they sing a song they haven't heard?" But a <laughs> part of the a part of the hook was, um, "It ain't no mystery, girl. You know that you tight. All I can say when I first saw you was." Mm, mm. Mm -hmm. So that's how the sto the song went. So every time you get to that, mm -hmm, the whole crowd will say that. The, so all the girls, the easy song to learn, you know. The girls was like, mm -hmm. the whole place. You know what I mean? And you know yeah. when the whole place. So how, he turned it around where I thought I was the man when we came in, Lord. This is my job now. After I saw the crowd do that, now I'm playing cl Charles close because I'm scared. That all the other managers in there are gonna take them from you know? right. <laughs> So I'm like, like oh, you shit. Know, he had to tell me that. Take it easy, I got you, but I ain't going nowhere. I said, listen, <laughs> remember you staying at my crib. I told him you staying at my crib tonight. Anybody else, you know what I mean? Don't you disrespect, you're gonna be sleeping outside, my brother. Dang, you <laughs> me. Yeah. Well, well, the next question I had, the next question I had was, um, when when I first came into the um rap game, I was like right up under the the forefathers. Um, but uh, I came in at like eighteen, nineteen. With you being at thirty, and we got our our success at eighteen and nineteen. And now you're in your thirties, and like you said, you had a, a experience with a national label. Um, do you get discouraged? And if you get discouraged, what gives you that momentum to keep going at, at mid-age that, you know, that makes you keep going? Or do you want to give up some time? Oh, wow, what a, a beautiful question. Um, do I want to give up some time? No, you know, when I was younger, uh, I'm still young, <laughs> when I was in my yeah. 20s and, and uh, eight, you know, You know, around 18, I used to feel that way. I used to, you know, it was uh, the, the relationships I was in with. Oh, man. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Have you Oh, it's frozen on my side. It froze. Okay. Mine is frozen, too. Okay. And we're there you go. You're back. Um, you gotta you do it, but repeat back. the question again. Yes, okay. Back Lord Rocco, we couldn't hear you. Can you hear us? Yeah. 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 yeah I can. I can, Jackie. Everybody else there? Okay, we yeah, can hear now. Yeah. Okay. okay, we can. Okay. Okay. Yeah. It. It. It was. It was. Ne it was never because of a uh, uh, music. Uh, it was. Well. It, in, in some instances, yeah, because I felt like, um, you know, nobody was, uh, when I say nobody, I mean the major labels, I was mellies and, and trying to get in contact with big execs and nobody would respond back. But most of the time, um, you know, there, God would always send somebody to me to let me know, you know, that I was good at music and why, and you know, when's the next album coming out? When's the next single coming out? I want to hear you keep going. And, and no, if it wasn't for those people, you know, uh, I probably um, wouldn't have kept going. 
Because, right. you know, because I, when I, been, I was in the business for a while, and then you have the ups and downs. So I was able to feel that pressure of, I mean, like you say, relationships also. You got a lot of things that once, once you get kids and you, you, you got an expectation with the kids, the kids' mother, um, and things sometimes don't go right. And um, also, yeah, like you said, yeah. with the music business. So you have to have that motivation around you or self-motivation. The, the keep going because I had those times that I just wanted to get out. I did get out of the game, you know, and um, and I and that's what drove me back. Like what you said, people saying, "Man, you still got it," and you know, you can't stop. And so, I just wanted to speak from a level yeah. of you being, you know, where you at in life. Right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you so much for that question. Yes, sir. Beautiful. Oh my God, I'm having a good time. You guys want to listen to some more music? How y'all feeling tonight? Yeah, let's Absolutely. play some more. Absolutely. Yeah. Some more let's music. Do it. Woo! Come on, Rashi. Most definitely. Lord Rockin' House Snackers. Oh, it's your Justice Show with Jackie Phillips. Yikes Radio.com and AccelerateRadio.net and streaming live on Facebook. Now we're also streaming live on YouTube. We're just doing everything we can, Lord Rockin'. I appreciate it. Mr. Charlie's joined our team. We've got Gerald Tapper. So we're doing some bigger things here on the platform. So thank you so much for coming. And, uh, Share your time with us. Most definitely. Do we have any questions in the chat room? I'll take them too if we have any. Yes. Okay. All right. You ready, Rashid? Oh, Lord. I got more questions. I have to be the one to greet you. Mm hmm. Yes, yes. Oh, Lord. Lord Rocker is in the building. You need to pay attention. Mm, please not to mention I am the one. Woo! Woo! Spazzing with the work, we on the get out. Spazzing with the kick, we on the get out. Down too long, we want to visit. Down too long, we want to visit. What the keys? What the keys? What the keys? What the keys? I don't know what these suckers been taught. Uh -huh. Talking all that money, what you bought? Better get a home and a car. Yeah, nothing like a watch to hold you down. Good law. Swear we're gonna have to buy some land and a love from the law. You love, you you. I'm for now. We're gonna get it on the roof. Say, 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 we're gonna party on the roof. Bam, bam, bam. I'm in demand. What it do? Bam, bam, bam. I just really want you. No squares in the crew. Ah, yeah. Oh, baby, you got I got love. I'm that guy, oh that shit, I let them slide I'm granny, I'm granny, it's time so, uh, Spazzin' with the work, we on the get out Spazzin' with the kick, we on the get out We're down too long, we wanna visit We're down too long, we wanna visit Where the keys, where the keys, where the keys uh, Where the keys, where the keys Spazzin' with the work, we on the get out Spazzin' with the kick, we on the get out We're down too long, we wanna Facebook 
uh, viewers in the house tonight. I guess there's a little bit of audio scenario going on. I just want to, if I can, just real quick, everybody check in with everyone on, face, uh, on Facebook. We've got Tweed Cadillac in the house, everybody. He's a part of the Penthouse Players, everyone. So you want to do your history on Tweed Cadillac if you don't already know. He always says, uh, got me saying it, tell a hater to tell a player. He comes on. He has a really cool show. Um, I, mean, I did. He blessed me to be able to do a radio drop, guys. We're going to relax a little bit. And it goes a little something like this. I say, you are now listening to 93.3 FM Spectacular Low Rider Oldies at their finest. And this is Jackie Ray Phillips of the Poetry Justice Show. And join us every Thursday night. Tell a hater. To <laughs> anyway, I just want to give a big shout out to Tweet Cadillac. I appreciate you tuning in tonight. And ladies and gentlemen, uh, we have one of the realest people that I've met in a long time. You know, you go by actions and words, they go hand in hand, but it's particularly great, Mr. Charlie, as I bless you. And, you know, we talked the other day about Big Tap earlier today, Lori G all the time, Lord Rocket, you hear back with us. And the love that I felt when you wanting to come back. This is the type of love I get from this woman. Her name is Meg, Miss Meg, Megalicious. I met Meg. And uh, Meg is a really, really, really cool woman. And so I just wanted to give a very special shout out to Megalicious um, on IG. It's Megalicious702. And you can catch her also on Facebook at Meg Born. And she wanted me to let you know, Lord Rocca, that she really enjoyed that beat. Uh, she likes your work a lot. It was a little bit of audio situation going on, but she did get a chance to listen to it and just wanted to let you know that uh, she really liked your work. And so I think that's important for us to know. Thank you so much. Guys, we have a what? question, a comment in our Zoom room. Go ahead, Lori Ray. So, Ms. Chris Fisher says, with the current events, have you thought about researching and writing on how the world is living in fear, but yet you see some folks that are being blessed in this time? Oh, that's a good question. Um, <laughs> yes, I've, I've thought of, I guess I've thought about it. Yes, I have. Um, I believe that most of my music um, is that uplifting type of music. Though everything that's going on, there's a lot going on, that type of music that I make uplifts you and keeps you in that positive spirit, you know? So, uh, yeah, that, that's always, um, you know, I'm aware of what's going on. I don't typically put it in my music, but, um, but that's my goal at the end of the day is, is to uplift your spirits and, you know, keep you going. I think that's what uh, music has done throughout the times. Uh, if you look, you know, if you study history where, you know, when the, Dr. Martin Luther King, had, uh, had passed away and James Brown came out with I'm Black and I'm Proud and sings songs of that nature. Uh, music has always pushed us through tough times. And I think that's uh, the artist's job, you know, in, in, in this world. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Great I, <laughs> I have a question for you. Um, Lord, Lord Rock, and then we're going to take, I can also take this to to you, Mr. Charlie, as well, from artistic artistic perspective. When you're taking a look at um, facing the nation right now, the things that are going on, COVID, your own narrative of how you would like things to play out. When we talked with earlier about the human side of things, if you could write your own narrative in the next piece of work, your next production, your next rap, if you will, could you maybe describe a narrative that you would write for where you would see things going from where they are right now? Hmm. Wow. Uh, I'm going to try to be imag imaginative because every day something, cha something changes. <laughs> something always changes every day. Um, wow, man. I really... Uh, I would write a song about... Um, Ooh. That's a very good question. Okay. <laughs> <That's> a good <laughs> question. I, I, 
You know, uh, man, I would write. I would. I would love a song about uh, about us taking better care of ourselves. I think everything starts with self. You know, so finding a way to better take care, better take care of ourselves, eating better, working out. That's why I came up with the get up too, because you know we still got to get up. We still got to. Black people, uh, in particular, have a beautiful, bright future ahead of them. You know, and we got to get up and go to work. This is not the time to lay down and be worried. You know, um, that's why um, you know, my whole mission is to get us up, motivate us. You know, and, and, and you know, the Lord is gonna, you know, it's gonna make a way for us. We just gotta believe in it. Okay. What about you, Lord? I'm mean, excuse me. What about you, Mr. Charlie? With your work, what would you create? Um, yeah. Well, first, I I, I want to say that, that last song was dope. That, that last yeah. song we played was dope, man. Um, <laughs> I, I haven't heard no songs that I didn't like, but if I was a label, I'd put that out first with a video and just hype. That was a dope song. Um, now back to the question at hand. Um, I actually was talking about that today. Uh, was and it was more of a humorous but serious, uh, serious question. When I was riding with my girl, and I was just saying, haven't they killed enough people? Like, stop it! Like, you know, um, because I took the the angle of this had to be man-made. I always felt like that. And um, as you know, I spoke with you, Lori, and um, Tab about it. I'm dealing with COVID right now. Um, I, I, I think I had it over probably a week and a half now, and I, I haven't had many symptoms, and, uh, but, but a headache and a sinus. But uh, when I got tested, they told me I did have it. So uh, one of the reasons why they, we came up with I probably didn't have too many symptoms is because I was, me and Tap talk about this all the time, I'm always on ginger. I'm always on like natural herbs. So I didn't suffer through a lot of things that others suffered uh, with through the COVID. And I'm like, now everything is coming back to normal. So um, that's what I also would, would come up with, just like uh, better living plans for going back to our natural roots of how we took care of ourselves. So when things come up like this, our body is already prepared for um, to fight it because um, having it, I seen, I was able to experience how ways I think this is killing people because it, it messes with your head. It's like it's, you, you're not getting enough oxygen to your brain. It, it can cause the aneurysm. The other one is the breathing. It stops your breathing. It's almost like something is choking your body. And it's giving you the worst headache in the world. So um, yeah. I started taking all the herbs that attack all of these areas. Um, and and um, I'm feeling much better every day. And um, I just, like you say, we need to educate Black people on, you know, the natural herbs, the things they try to keep us from knowing. And um, you fill your body up with all of this stuff that we say tastes nasty, but <laughs> everything tasting good killing me, you know. Um, so we got to get our body... We got to get our bodies used to things that uh, we feel is nasty and frown about. And I, you just got to eat it and swallow it like it tastes like candy, you know, because it's going gonna, it's gonna to help you in the long run. Yeah. My God. I am so glad you are feeling better, Mr. Charlie. Definitely. Yeah. Continue to take good care of yourself. Oh, must I, let me add in, because I didn't have many symptoms, a lot of people have COVID at, you know, when I went to the doctor um, without symptoms. So it's good to get tested because you can easily give it to somebody. And if your body is healthy, like he was saying, with you eating right, you may not have any symptoms at all. So mm -hmm. um, it's good just to go make sure that you don't mm -hmm. have it because, because your body's strong, your sister, brother, child, may not be as strong as yours and this is where you see people are dying because they have illnesses or just don't know how to fight it. some people have this this virus and and don't i'm, I'm eating uh not i'm not saying eating taking um sea moths mm. with ginger ginseng yeah. ginger i'm you know we you know you got you, and i'm not saying you don't you don't post it it's not fda approved and they're not going to tell you these things are legitimate curves but it's working for me you know, so right. um, I would advise us to stick to a lot of the roots, you know. Yes. I, I agree. I absolutely agree with that. I do that too, Mr. Charlie. We talked about that the other day too. I've started the, I've been in the Irish sea moths, um, gel, sands, 
the you know the pet the quarantine back in March. Making it right I now, <laughs> right? Yeah, and I've been juicing a lot yeah, more. Right now, um, I do still sometimes cheat and want to eat the stuff that tastes good, but uh, I just do try to make as many changes as I can. Like you, we all are saying, and keeping ourselves healthy as best we can. What do you mm -hmm. think, Lori G, about all of this? I definitely agree. Um, I think it's like Mr. Charlie and Lord Raka have said that this isn't a time where we can definitely reflect that we can definitely do better, that we can spend this quarantine time with really focusing on ourselves and how we can pull out the best parts of us, right? How can we get back to that, to being the, the best person that we can be. And as you say, Mr. Charlie, when we think back to the beginning of time, there was no, you know, pill for this or a serum for that. It was the herbs. It was the herbs and the plants that God put here uh, for us. So I think, um, you know, just through time, we've become so instant gratification you know like supersize everything right you microwave know, right? microwave there you go let's microwave, microwave. Yeah. There you go. Supersize right. it. Right. <laughs> right. let's right. instapot it right everything is just quick 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 and i think um we got to get back to, get back to that you know at least i've tried to take this period of time to really be conscious about um the scripture that says my body's my temple right? And what am I putting into my temple? I, uh, before COVID, my job, I live about 60 miles from the city. So I have to commute every day, those 60 miles. And it's about an hour and 15 minutes on the train. Or if I drive it, it's about two and a half hour drive, right? So you, I'm commuting about four or five hours a day. And when I get back home from the end of that commute, I'm not feeling cooking nothing, right? So it's what can I microwave? What can I stop on the way and pick up and eat? And that is just so incredibly unhealthy. Um, one thing that I have been able to accomplish is in the light of COVID, I don't, I don't do that fast food thing. You know, we're cooking good, wholesome food much, much more so. This is a period that I think, as, as you all have said, we can be reflective and bring out the better parts of us. Another thing I want to add is um, that when I was younger, like about eight or nine, I was, um, we used to move, we used to um, go to Cordial, Georgia. It's a country town um, well, for the summer. And mm -hmm. my grandma used to take us out to the fields to work. And later on, when I got older, I realized you know, I was on the fields like the slaves. I, I got to experience what slaves went through being out there in the hot sun and everything. But at least at this time, they was getting paid for being out there. But touching back on the subject, a lot of older people, we learned this um, unhealthy eating from the older generation. But what the older okay. generation did also, they rarely went to fast foods. They rarely... Mm -hmm. And they, 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 they had peas from the ground. They mm -hmm. got fish from yes. the water. And um, mm -hmm. they ate a lot of healthy foods, too, mixed with the bad foods. Um, but nowadays, we're eating more microwavables and mm -hmm. fast yeah. foods than healthy foods. So, and I think that's why we're full of so many illnesses and sicknesses right now because we're eating everything but the natural roots of what we grew, what, what we originally supposed to be eating as black people. Oh, absolutely. I remember like with my, our grandmother, she, you know, I don't think they ever really ate out, you know, right. <laughs> she'd go in there, put on a pot of beans or, you yeah. know, get a glass with some buttermilk and put some cornbread in there. And yeah, I'd be like, yeah, oh, yeah. that's horrible. <laughs> yeah. that, that, that was but, actually, it, it was actually a treat. <laughs> If y'all remember, it was actually a treat to get Burger King, mm -hmm. and when you got that, you were so happy, like, wow! But that was rare. And I remember that, guys. I was living to turn 16. <laughs> when I turned oh my 16, God. Oh my God. I could drive the car, and me and right Susie now. could go to McDonald's every single day. Because before that, we couldn't go, because our parents oh. wouldn't take us to McDonald's, you know? 
Yep. So we got to get back to what's good for us, what's healthy for us, you know? I think that's definitely important. And I don't want to take the subject off of what, what we're on, but I, I, I end up forgetting uh, my, my question. But um, sure. I, I, I almost forgot it. Hold on, wait, it's coming back. <laughs> it, it always happens. Go ahead, talk. I'll I come back. <laughs> <laughs> It'll come back to you. It'll come back. It'll come back. No. <laughs> so, Lord Rocca, I have a question for you. So now we're talking about, you know, COVID and being still and busy and healthy eating. Well, how do you how do you practice? On, on the Poetry of Justice show, we talk a lot about self-care, right? And about how do we focus on ourselves and make sure we're okay. Do you have a self-care regimen? Yes, I do. You know, I'm in um, I'm in the Nation of Islam, and um, you know, we have a book called How to Eat to Live by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, and in that book, he teaches us how to eat to live. One of the greatest things that he said to eat is navy beans. Inside the navy beans, you have what you call niacin, and niacin helps fight the radiation in your body, and uh, also helps fight sicknesses and poisonous poison in your body. This bean has been, uh, taught, uh, has been taught uh, to us to eat for over 90 years now. And it's one of the most powerful beans that you can possibly eat. It's called the navy beans. They're small white beans. They kind of look like mm -hmm. the white beans, but they're titled the navy beans. Where'd you get it from? Um, you can, well, you can get it from sometimes Smart and Final. You have a Smart and Final where you're located, but sometimes Smart and Final has it. And also, um, I know um, the personal farm, you know, the Muhammad farm sells it, and I have their information. You can contact, I can give it to you. You can contact them, okay. and you can order yeah, I want that. Yeah. a 70 pound Yeah, you can order a 70 pound bag for yourself. And because uh, I have one here, and I had just had some yesterday because I started to feel a little under the, under the weather myself. Weather. And um, I got back to eating my navy beans, and now I feel much better. And, um, yeah, that that that's my uh, uh my healthy uh regimen that I take, and even of course I strive to eat less too, because you know we're taught that it takes yeah you know, your body twenty four hours to truly process you know the food that you intake, so learning how to eat less and when you do eat eat the proper foods eat it at the proper right. time, you know that's also important and of mm -hmm. course getting some exercise going for a walk. We're taught that yeah, walking, yeah. walking is one of the best exercises you can take. You not, do, right. weight, yeah. not 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 you know uh, running mm. up and down some stairs, but just walking it helps stimulate the body and the brain. <laughs> also, is this spelled N A V Y like Navy? Yeah, like Navy, just like okay, like, okay. like the military. Yeah, Navy beans. Yes, sir. Okay. Well, I remember the question now. Yeah, I'm, okay. right. I'm, I'm getting old. I'm getting old now. Okay. So. All right, so the, the question was, uh, dead or alive, what rap artist, or it can be R&B, that you want to work with? It can uh, be more than one. Yeah, yeah, uh, definitely Tupac Shakur, uh, Bob Marley, Nipsey Hussle, Biggie Smalls, and my favorite artist of all time, Marvin Gaye. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good line. I, I I actually live around the corner from Marvin Gaye's home where he passed away at. Oh wow! Oh wow! Yeah. Wow! So that, that was in L.A., huh? Yeah, I was in L.A. Yep, in, in South L.A. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Okay. Well, how would you answer that Charlie? question, Mr. Charlie? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Same question. Same question. Um, yeah. Yes, sir. You, you know, it's funny because uh, it's also a comedian. Um, I, I'll, and and uh, when it's Michael Jackson and Richard Pryor. Mm -hmm. um, um, rapper would, would be Slick Rick and Big Daddy Kane. Mm, yes. Um, yes. R&B, Stevie Wonder. Ah. Stevie Wonder, wow. Yeah. Wow. Or Big Daddy Kane. What's your favorite Big Daddy Kane song? Yeah, one of your favorites. You talking to me? My big daddy. Yeah, this is Charlie. Can you remember? Uh, yes, I can remember. Um, <laughs> um, what, dun, 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 dun. If it was the first song he put out. I can't. I don't know why my brain is slipping. Right? Maybe it's the cold. <laughs> <laughs> I can't think. It's the first one he put out. Tap. You know what? The first song. Ashy. Ashy. Gerald Gone. It was his first single. I just can't think of the name of it. 
All right, oh, yeah. slick brick. What's your favorite slick brick? Uh, you know, rocker. Oh, children's story. Children's story. <laughs> children's story. <laughs> Mona Lisa was good too. Yeah, yeah, Mona Lisa. yeah, Mona Lisa was a good one too. And you know, and I, 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 I love that album, The Rulers Back, um, in particular because it came out the year I was born, 1988. So I, I love that Slick Rick album. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, um, Big Daddy King's first song was "Ain't No Half." Step. Ain't no half step. Yeah. I couldn't think of it. I don't know why, man. I've been having that little problem lately, man. <laughs> yeah. Ain't no half step. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the first one is, oh, I used to love, oh, God. my favorite, favorite is Lottie Dottie. I oh, freaking Lottie Dottie love yes. Lottie Dottie. Yes. Yeah. Lloyd, yeah. oh, yeah. what about you? <laughs> Give us some uh, artists that you would be interested in working with, lovely lady. Man, for me, and you probably know this, right? It would be Heavy D. Oh, wow. Such a Heavy D fan. Such a Heavy D fan. Yeah, man. That's really it's good. like amazing. I, I and you're pretty quiet, Mr. Tap. Stuff. Say it again. Ask Rashid. Or Miss Rashid, is he going to have any more music for Laura Rocker and... um? Mr. Charlie, do we, you got anything you want to share with us tonight musically? Um, nah, man. I I I I'd rather keep use this time for Lord Rocker, man. <laughs> he said, you know, I, I yeah, you know, I, we he will have another night where we both can just come on here and, and, and do, do some songs, maybe. Um, but I, I I'm enjoying the vibe, man. You know, cause I I listen to my songs all the time, and y'all heard some <laughs> of them, but it's his show tonight. <laughs> So I want to get some more for him. So we'll bring it back. We'll definitely bring it back. Yeah, that'll but be nice. To, yeah. I was going to ask the panel, I know we were talking a little bit about COVID because that's our reality. How about the isolation part of it? Have any of you been like affected by that? You know, with the quarantining, wearing the mask, anything with isolation. Lori and I were on a call this morning and uh, that was a big thing about people feeling isolated and dealing with the, you know, just what that feels like and that new normal and some of the emotional effects from that. What about you, Lord Rocker? Have you experienced anything? Are you, you know, like with this whole new normal quarantine? How does that affect you? Uh, well, it definitely uh, slowed things down as far as for business goes. You know, people are kind of, you know, they, they want to stay away. And sometimes it's hard to get in contact with my barber. <laughs> I, I can't get a hold of him because he wants to stay away. And I don't believe him at all. That's like the toughest thing, and uh, but you know I'm I'm currently working on a movie right now, um, which I'm a casting director for, and it's starring Marcus T. Paul, the brother who played Miles and Moesha, and we were shooting, uh, we, yeah, we were shooting for the cast uh, a couple of days, and I had to be in and out of the of the set because you know there's when we're filming, you know, we got to stand a little closer than normal uh, next to each other, so. I could only do that for so long and then I, I got to head out. So that's the toughest thing too, is not being able to actually stay there for the entire shoot and be in and out. Um, that's my thing. Wow, that does sound like that. Hi, Nigga Chris says congratulations from the Zoom room. And just to oh, share with you. everybody, Meg from Facebook land says that her favorite Big Daddy Kane is word to the mother. That's her favorite Big Daddy Kane. Never mind, Victoria. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh. I'm with this. I'm just gonna sit here laid back to this nice mellow beat, you know? Let's drop some smooth lyrics. It's 88. Time to set it straight. 88. You know 88. No <laughs> I'm ready. Yeah. They want to get some, but I'm, I just wanted to make y'all feel good. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh, I remember that. That was good. That was good. Exactly. I know, ain't no half stepping, man. Okay, in the light of everything that's been going on, what does the word justice mean to you, Laura? Oh, that's a very, very good, good question. Because, um, you know, in the nation of Islam, we believe in freedom, justice, and equality. Justice is everyone receiving the proper in the proper treatment, you know, we suffer from injustice for so long as a people in America. And that's something 
something that we know all very too well is injustice. And we've been demanding justice since we set our foot here in America. So um, yeah, justice just means every everyone receiving the proper equal treatment and having the ability to um, exercise their freedom. Wow. Uh, what about you, Big Chap? What does justice mean to you, sir? I see you. Oh, yes. Yeah. So, you know what? I'm going to go on the same. That, that, that answer um, the Lord just gave us, I'm going with that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going with what Lord said. He said it for me. Couldn't have, couldn't have got it no better. Lord Rocker, did you hear? Salam alaikum, Lord. Well, thanks. Salam, sir. Amen. Lord Rocker, did you have an opportunity to hear, first of all, about the uh, NFAC and the march on July 4th in Stone mm -hmm. Mountain, Georgia? Were you? Did you get a chance to see any of that footage at all, Lord Rocker? From the, they're called the Not Fucking Around Coalition. Did you see that? No, I did not know that. And I definitely didn't think that's what the NA, NFAC stand, stood for. Um, no, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't see that. Can you tell me a little bit more about it? Oh my God. When you get a chance, uh, we're going to, you know, when you get a chance, Google it and take a look at it. Cause I really, when we, you know, talk again, I want to hear your ideas on that, but they are a group of uh, brothers and just all in militia outfit guns, because you know, the uh, Stone Mountain, Georgia is the birthplace of the Ku Klux Klan. And then July 4th being what it does. And so we talked a little bit about what is the 4th of July to the Negro. But the only reason why I brought it up to you, because I know also that was the day that, that the Minister Farrakhan said his speech. And yes. just kind of wanted to know from a Black perspective, if you had any commentary on this, you know, group of individuals going to Stone Mountain, Georgia, the birthplace of the KKK armed, ready to get down with the get down. And the name of the organization is the Not Fucking Around Coalition. I want you to check that out with your chance. Yes, what yes, ma'am, I will. I will. <laughs> what about you? Did you have a chance to see that, Mr. Charlie? Um, yeah, I saw clips of it on Facebook. But like you said, I didn't know that was the name of it. I was just, and then I, I also didn't know that that's what it was, what a KKK started. I didn't know that neither. I was just hoping yeah, that they don't get yeah, hurt, you know? Yeah. That, I know. I know one thing, that gun, the, the leader, the guy that was talking, the leader of the crew, that gun was bigger than him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was small. He was small too. <laughs> but yeah. a lot of heart, a lot of heart being the small guy. Yeah, man. I'm like, I'm like, listen, that guy's going to use that gun. They better step back. <laughs> I know. It's going to be crazy. Boy, I don't know, everybody, the times that we're living in, I've never seen anything like it. I've been on this planet a fair amount of decades, and sometimes it gets a little, a little weary, and then sometimes what I like to want to do here lately is just take that for fuel. You know what I mean? Take that for us to do something different, to make a difference in the world. And uh, I have a piece that I'd like to share with everybody um, here on the Poetry Just to Show. I hadn't been doing my poetry like I used to. But anyway, I did a recent piece, and, and uh, I actually wrote it in 2016. But it was published just this past week in the LA Times, LA Art News. And I want to give a shout out to Linda Kay, my girl Linda Kay of Linda Kay Poetry. And um, hadn't written in a while and just decided I need to get back in. And so I just want to share something with everybody tonight. And uh, this is called The Essence of Beauty. And it goes this. What is love but a love? A love that is meek, with fantasies to seek. What is an emotion, whipping and roaring deep within the oceans? The ocean so deep. The ocean so deep as the dancing clouds meet. 
What is beauty? Where does it meet? Beyond the surface and between the sweet, the sweet nectar sensations of lust hitting between the bust of a woman streaming across her hand, gifting into the land of beauty. Is it merely skin deep where the orifice of the orchestra speaks into the hearts of men, women and children descend into a mystical leery. What a dramatical theory of life living beyond the strife into the abyss where the souls coexist amongst the elite, sipping the wine of the sweet nectar of fruit, topping the tree's roots. Seductive is the essence of beauty. The poet is raised. So what do you guys think about that? The essence of beauty. That was nice. Laura Rocca, I see you. Where are you at, sir? What are you thinking? I, I, oh, I love this so much. I love that the uh, poetry has so much questioning in it, questioning in it, because with questioning is how you get on the path to getting to know God. So what is this? What is that? Is what is, it's getting to know God's creation when you start questioning and then your mind starts to travel and you start to want to seek knowledge. So I love it. That's what I got out of it. Thank you so much. What about you? Mr. Charlie 305. That's your girl, Jackie Ray. Some, <laughs> some recent stuff for the poetish range. What did you think about that, sir? Yeah, I, I just felt like it was sexy. It just yeah, felt it was very, very sexy. I felt it was sexy. <laughs> hey, Charlie, Charlie. And, and I didn't want to wanna go there. You know, I almost started twisting my nipples or something. You know? <laughs> I, said, I said, is this supposed to be spiritual or sexy? <laughs> <laughs> I, know, I, got it, I said, let me keep that, but since you asked me, I got to answer yes. that, honestly. I mean, if she, would just, if she would have read it just normally, Charlie, you wouldn't have thought that. Yeah, what is the, the way, way she said it. <laughs> and then, and then, then she going to throw the, the hypothetical, what do you think? You know what we think. thinking. <laughs> now, now, Lord Rocker put it in a professional way. <laughs> I love the way you put it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. That boy is smart. <laughs> yes, he is. Yes, he is. He's so intelligent. Anyway, what you think, Lola? You hadn't heard that one? Did you hear that one in a while? I, thought, yeah. I have Girl. not. <laughs> Chris from the Zoom yeah. Room says, nice poetess. And I oh, think it's, you so it's beautiful. I, I agree with Lord Raka that your, your work always seems to question and I, I love hearing your poetry because it challenges me to reflect. It challenges me to think, right? It um, encourages me to slow down and really hear those words, right? And it draws me in to really read again, to begin to analyze and to make symbolism and to really uncover meanings of things, so. I love it, but you know I'm your biggest cheerleader. Yay! Well, that is very, very true. <laughs> yeah, you know, and, and on, on another note, I think I I hear that like just in, I can hear that in movies. You know, like I can hear your voice doing mm -hmm. things like in, in movies on songs. Skit that you have that that talent with your voice. You know how to work it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Well, thank you so much, Mr. Charlie 305. Now, don't forget that, sir, because I do know there's film taking on your horizon, as well as you, too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, well, that, there you go. You got about. two yeah. filmmakers here. Woo! Check us out here. Collaboration. Yeah, for sure. But anyway, I just wanted to share. I don't know, it's just been on my spirit, you know, sometimes, because it's just everything is so heavy. You know, everything, and for me, everything is just so freaking heavy. So I'm like, you know what? Let's, let's yeah, he's on, just try he's to on. find some comfort. All right. 
And I like the part where Lord Rocker, what you were saying about the creativity um, and unlocking your brain and allowing it to go new places um, and, and being able to see things and, 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 and just kind of work, work in the spirit. So that's just kind of where I am right now. Um, as a place of being, and I thank again everybody for joining us on the show. So I appreciate it so much. I don't know. I just wanted to share that. You got anything so Jackie else? Ray, we've you? we've asked the um, the other artists where they draw their inspiration from. I'm curious to know or have you share with our audience where does your inspiration come for new pieces and and new works? That's for me. Yes, that's for you. Where are you? Like, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, hmm, my new pieces usually come from, you. historically, they would come from like pain, I would say, you know, like things that I was going through uh, spiritually, you know, but then I kind of, and I appreciate that, Lord Rocca, because Anne, I, I'm glad that you said that. I'm going to go two ways. I'm going to start with Lord Rocca. Lord Rocca, when you critiqued my work just now, two words that very that stood out to me very strongly was you said about opening the pathways of the brain. I know I'm paraphrasing, but allowing, when you said about creativity, because I am a firm believer that we are all, all born to create, right? Some people are going to be creating what you create, what I create, People are creating, not necessarily has to be artistically, but they're things in life that they are born to, we are all born to create, to do. I believe that from a, a, higher, a higher power spiritually. Point of the matter is, it's like you said, when you allow your brain to go to those right spots and those right places, to be able to go deep and be creative and allow yourself to tap into that creativity and to write not necessarily for what we, the human being, wants to write, but to be a vessel and to produce what this higher power has allowed us to tap into. So that's the part that I appreciate you for, and that is definitely something that I do, Lori G and everyone, as I try to just sit down and, and, and just close off. It was at the beginning of it when the Lord blessed me with this gift, but lyrics would just come to me on their own. Just, I could be out and about, Lori can tell you, and I'm just, oh, that lyric came with this, and I'm just writing, writing, writing. And I, I wrote the book. I have a book, um, Lord Rock, and I want to share it with you. I'm going to send it out to you. We can get the information offline. It's called The Poetry's Rains, and it is a collection mm -hmm. of poetic art. So it's about 81 pieces in this particular book. And so those pieces would just kind of come to me on their own. And then as I graduated and have been growing, and then Lord Rock, I started doing uh, spoken word. So taking some of those pieces and creating my own work. And I worked with a, well, one producer is specific and created a, actually a little five piece. That's a CD, you know, a little, uh, and you can catch me on Spotify. You guys can get me on iTunes. You guys can uh, get me on all the platforms as well. Uh, SoundCloud, and uh, the piece is called The Archer, and again, I'm the poetess, or the poetess reigns, and so it got to a period of time where I had to start doing the work, right, and first, I said the Lord was just giving it to me, he's just like, here, feeding me, like, right, so feeding me so I can feed his sheep, because the poetess reign is very richly uh, enriched with spirituality, very strong spirituality in that book, because I told you it kind of resonated with pain. So it's healing, and that book can completely healed me and allowed me to open up creatively. And then, then what I had to do, I was challenged everyone to now, instead of those lyrics just coming to me, I had to start doing work, right? That creativity had been open to me. So now I actually have to input some of Jackie into it. And that's the time when to answer the question probably more specifically is when I have to, when I choose to sit down, allow my into it. That, that takes me now, parallel back over to what you were saying to me, Mr. Charlie, about the, the sexy side of it because that's also a part of the essence of Jackie, right? And so my pieces historically have been very, very, you know, light and very save the world and very spiritual. 
But then there's a, there, I'm a woman, I'm a human being, I'm a lady. And I decided, well, you know what? Let me just kind of open up a little bit. Let me allow myself to, to feel and write and, and kind of be me. And I wrote that piece and I was kind of shy about it. have one image of yourself and what you try to put out there into the world and I just kind of took the plunge and said you know in light of COVID and doing things differently and wrote the piece a few years back and decided hey what the heck I'm gonna put it out there and see what happens and it was accepted published and here I am sharing it with you guys so I like the fact because I'm I'm grateful because you guys picked up both of the things that meant the most to me the creative side being deep I appreciate that part and then of course Mr. Charlie I want people to feel good you know, right, right, right. that uh, just a little, a little nine seven six for you. You know what right, I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong that, with that, that, that. I don't that, think. Yeah, that, that was beautiful. It was beautiful. Uh, also, I like to add that's that's what kind of got me into the rap and the expression of it. And um, also with anything from people like T D Jakes, the way he. Performed, the way he expresses it, you know, and uh, also it was a it was a minister from the Nation of Islam um, when I first started uh, going to the meetings called Minister B.I. I, I think he's in L.A. I don't know if you heard of him, Minister B.I., but just the way he expressed the words, that always catch me because I'm a, I'm a person of visual. So when you express stuff with words mm -hmm. and, 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 and the actions that go with it, that, that, that gets me, you know what I'm saying? That catches me. Yes. And that's what you did with the poem, you know. The, the expression was, was everything that caught me. Yay. Well, I thank you so much, gentlemen. But yes, Lori G, I think I answered the question, okay? What do you think? Absolutely. I just <laughs> want to share. Thank you, beautiful. I've and been having of sharing. Lord Rocca, how do we get our hands on this music? Exactly. Yes, ma'am. Uh, tap into my IG, which is at Lord Rocka, L O R D, period, R O K A. I'm releasing a song from the album every two weeks. That's how I'm releasing it. Uh, I'm on Spotify. I'm on Apple Music. I'm on iTunes. I'm on Tidal. Every streaming platform you could possibly think of, I'm on there. So just okay. type in my artist's name and, and, and you'll find it. All right. Well, I've definitely yeah, got to type you, it in. Especially you. Yes. Okay. Okay. All right. I think I'm frozen. Are you there, Jackie? I'm sorry, Lord Rock. I forgive me. <laughs> so, Lord Rock, I'm so, so whenever you're gonna yeah. start releasing, you say every two weeks another another new cut. Yeah, every every two weeks a, a song from the album comes out into the song is completed. It should be in October. We should be done. And uh, yeah, it's just a beautiful. Thing. How I'm do you know what's now with album call? Mm -hmm. Is it my internet? I got lost a little bit of the audio. Are you, you there? Yeah, I'm, I'm I here. I can hear now. Oh, good. Okay. We can hear each other, everybody. And Lauren Rocker, you said you were working on a film, right? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Did you give us a behind the scenes kind of a sneak peek about the content of that? What's this film about? Can you share? I can share a little bit. Okay. <laughs> the, the, um, the, the movie is called, it's a, it's a short, uh, independent black film. We have a black director, a black writer, predominantly most of the cast is black. Uh, the director, he's from New Orleans, Louisiana, who moved out here from Los Angeles. His name is Brandon Woodrin. And um, the movie is just um, it's kind of like 007 meets uh, Kill Bill. And, um, you know, it's about, uh, I can't tell you what it's about yet, but it, it's a very interesting <laughs> movie. Very interesting movie, very interesting cast, talented cast. And, um, you know, the biggest star on the, uh, on the film project right now is uh, Marcus T. Park, who played Miles and uh in moesha and he also was in red tails as well okay and so just like when when will we expect to see this to be released yes ma'am the trailer for it should be out uh next month next month uh, around oh, the wow. middle of September. yeah the trailer oh. should be out 
Yeah, yeah. And we're looking to take it to Netflix. We have a relationship there over there at Netflix, and we're looking to go big with it. So just look out for it. Uh, of course, I'll say, if you're tapped into my Instagram, you'll find out all about it, and you know, okay. you, you'll be one of the first to see it. All right. Well, hopefully, once uh, it's out there and you're nominated for your Academy Award, you'll come <laughs> back to the POJ show and give us the hey, inside hey. scoop on the making of that film. Exactly. Well, I, would, I would. I would love to. I'm doing exactly that. That's on my agenda. <laughs> yeah. Please be so hey. honored. I know it's been a great time. My goodness, well, Mr. It Chopper, happened. have you had fun tonight, sir? Yes, I have. You see, I was doing a lot. Of, when I'm doing a lot of listening, you know it got to be interesting. Yeah. <laughs> listening tonight. Yeah, Lord Rock is a very interesting brother. That's that yeah. brother got going on. I'm telling you. He really yeah. intrigued me. I know. Very intelligent. Thank you, Lord Rock, I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Yo, man, you know, what, you, know, you know what's cool, brother? You a young brother, man, but you got a lot of lot of etiquette, man. A lot of coof, man. The way you go about it and you think everything, every after everything, if someone says a compliment, you always respond with the right thing to say and you always say, please, thank you, pardon me. I mean, yo, my man, that's why you go on places and that is why you're getting things done. Cause people notice that because I noticed it right away, man. So yeah. keep it up, man. You ain't gotta change nothing, but what I saw and heard today was was definitely the point. Most definitely. Well, Thank you, my brother. Peace and bless the family. Thank you so much. I don't know if that was a that was that was the ending music, like time to go music. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you, yeah. brother. I see Lori, Char Charles, my brother Charlie. Thank you, Big Cap. Thank you, all the way from New York. Thank you. I love y'all. I love you too. Hold on and stay there, guys. Stay there, guys. I just want to say thank you so much, everybody, for joining the Poetry of Justice show with Jackie Ray Phillips on DiceRadio.com and AccelerateRadio.net. So we're going to tune in next week with the ladies of the chat. And uh, thank you so much for joining us tonight. I appreciate it. Love you. Yay! Thank you so much, Lord Rocker. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it so much. Thank you. I can't wait to come back. Okay, I know all the characters. Anyway, Lil Rocka, what is your next, what's your next gig now? Do you need anything from us? Is there anything that the poetry and justice show would do to help continue on the road that you <laughs> just, just, just supporting, um, you know, what, what I put out and, and just staying true to my Instagram. I put a lot of stuff that I'm doing on Instagram. Just tapping in and uh, anything y'all need from me, uh, I, I'm here. To, I'm here to serve. Yeah, yeah. Because we've got some bigger stuff going on, so um, I would love for you to consider coming back. Um, different platforms. When I say a different platform, it'll always be here with us, but like subject matter, you know what I'm saying? In terms of content with regard to the subject. So, Lori and I and Jura will be putting some things together and reaching back out to you very soon. Yeah. I, 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 would love, I would love to. I'm a, consider me an honorary member. Awesome. Bless That's you. Great. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. Well, another great show, guys. We did it again, Lord Rockman. And thank you so you much. Chris Victor in our Zoom room. No Chris, problem. Chris, you were with us all night. How you doing tonight, Mr. Charlie? You had a good time, sir? Yeah, always, always, always a pleasure. I appreciate you so much. So, how are things going on in your world with regard to uh, your, you know, what you're doing, the videos, or you're doing your filmmaking? Have you, you ventured over there yet, sir? You, you with me? Yes, sir. The, oh, well, you know what I'm, I'm dealing with right now, so I just gotta take everything kind of yeah, slow. We're on, we're on camera, but we're off like the regular got, show. Got yeah, yeah, yeah. To, yeah, yeah. yeah, so so yeah, I'm just taking everything slow with what I'm dealing with with the um, COVID. So um, uh, probably another week, I should be good, and I'll be.